after introducing steam power engines and auto cycle engineers of the 19th century didn't stop there and more specifically a young brilliant engineer named Rudolf Diesel. Rudolf Diesel was sitting in a thermodynamics class given by an amazing other engineer Carl von Linde and while Carl von Linde was explaining and describing steam power cycles Rudolf Diesel identified some issues and decided to design a new cycle that we will be calling diesel cycle. Before we start, let's see actually who was this amazing engineer and scientist, Rudolf Diesel. The story of the man behind the diesel engine and why he'd be turning in his grave. Franco-German engineer Rudolf Diesel started by designing fridges. But in 1892, he patented a revolutionary compression ignition engine known as the diesel engine. Unlike steam engines or early petrol engines, it worked by squashing air inside a cylinder, making it hot enough to ignite the fuel and create a powerful explosion. It was a very simple and economic system. It was invented to run on a variety of fuels, including coal dust and vegetable oils. One of his early devices was demonstrated at the 1900 World's Fair in Paris. It ran on peanut oil and won a Grand Prix. His invention was more eco-friendly and power efficient than alternatives at the time and farmers could literally grow their own fuel. Diesel became an evangelist for the use of vegetable oils as fuel. In 1912, he said, the use of vegetable oils for engine fuels may seem insignificant today, but such oils may become in course of time as important as petroleum and the coal tar products of the present time. Diesel's new engine made him a millionaire by the time he reached his 40s, but his life ended tragically. In 1913, while travelling from Belgium to England on a steamship, he drowned at sea. There were strange circumstances surrounding his disappearance and death, which encouraged conspiracy theories. While some people assumed he had killed himself, others thought he'd been murdered by foreign agents. There's little evidence, however, and the case remains unsolved. After Diesel's death, crude oil became more widely available, and his engine was adapted to use petrol as its only source of fuel. This type of petrol became known as petro-diesel, or simply diesel. The diesel engine went on to revolutionise the transport system after the First World War, powering trains, boats and buses. The first diesel lorries appeared on roads in the 1920s and 30s. The first production diesel car in the world was the Citroen Rosalie, introduced in 1933. Until very recently, half of all new cars sold in Europe were diesel. But diesel's image has taken a big knock with the scandal over cheating in emissions tests. There's also more evidence and awareness about the potential health problems diesel can cause. Sales in Europe dropped 20% in 2018. Some cities in the world have banned or imposed heavy tolls on diesel vehicles. Maybe we should have stuck to diesel's peanut engine. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to receive notifications for new videos. See you again soon. And now let's try to understand what is a diesel cycle. I will be also posting a video explaining what's the difference between an auto cycle and a diesel cycle, more specifically a gasoline engine and a diesel engine. An internal combustion engine transforms the chemical energy in fuel to mechanical energy. Diesel engines which have been serving mankind for over a century, 
are the most versatile and economical IC engines. To release the chemical energy in diesel effectively, an atomized form of the fuel is made to contact with high temperature and high pressure air. This energy is effectively transferred as mechanical rotational energy. So the operation of a diesel engine is all about producing high temperature and high pressure air continuously. We will see how this is achieved in this video. Piston Connecting rod Crank and cylinder form a mechanism called slider crank mechanism. Here, the linear motion of the piston is transformed to a rotary motion at the crank. In an IC engine, this mechanism is properly supported in an engine block. Cylinder head, valves and fuel injector are fitted above the engine block. When the piston moves downwards, inlet valves open and fresh air from outside is sucked in, or, in other words, the engine breathes. During the return stroke, inlet and exhaust valves are closed, and the air inside the cylinder gets compressed. During the compression stroke, the piston does work on the air, so the temperature and pressure of the air will rise to a level which is higher than the self-ignition value of the diesel. An atomized form of diesel is injected into this compressed air. The fuel gets evaporated and undergoes an uncontrolled spontaneous explosion. As a result, the pressure and temperature rise to high level values. The high energy fluid pushes the piston downwards. The hot air does work on the piston and energy in the fluid is converted to the mechanical energy of the piston. This is the only stroke where the piston absorbs power from the fluid. Due to inertia of the system, the piston moves upwards again. This time, the exhaust valves open and the exhaust is rejected. Again, the suction stroke happens. This cycle, which has a total four strokes, is repeated over and over for continuous power production. You may have noticed that a bowl is provided on top of the diesel engine piston. During the compression stroke, this bowl helps produce air that is rapidly swirling. Thus, the injected fuel gets mixed with the air effectively. The mechanical design of IC engines, particularly that of diesel engines, is a challenging and interesting task. Since the combustion process in diesel engines is never uniform and smooth, they are prone to more vibration and noise compared to petrol engines. Thus, diesel engines require a rugged structural design. Out of the four strokes, it is only during the power stroke that a tremendous amount of force is exerted on the piston. So a single cylinder engine will always have high force non-uniformity as shown. Similarly, the output power will also have a fluctuating nature. But with more number of cylinders, one can overcome these problems. Consider this four-cylinder engine. Here, four different strokes can occur at a time. So the power stroke is always present in the engine. As a result, a four-cylinder engine will have better force and power uniformity. In short, the more cylinders an engine has, the smoother it will operate. A four-cylinder engine generally operates on the following firing order.
A heavy flywheel which acts like a power reservoir further helps in smoothing out non-uniformity of power. A huge unbalanced force arises in the form of dynamic unbalance due to the excessive mass at the connecting rod side. This is negated by providing counterweights on the crank side. Opening and closing of valves are accurately controlled by a pair of camshafts. Camshafts derive motion from the engine. It is clear that the camshafts need to rotate at half the speed of crankshaft. We hope you had a nice introduction on the working of diesel engines. Thank you.